So for question one then, finding the exact value of the sine of a plus b given the exact value of the sine of a and sine of b separately. So it's not a case of a is inverse sine of three, quarters, three fifths and I get an approximate answer. b is inverse sine of root three upon four, I get an approximate answer for the angles, add the two angles together and find the sine to get an approximate answer. It's the exact value, so I'll have to use an expansion. So the correct expansion would be the sine of a times the cos of b plus preserving whichever order you prefer, preserving the order of the angles, it would be the cos of a times the sine of b. Basically they switch the partners there. I know the sine of a and I know the sine of b. To get the cos of b there's a couple of ways. You could do it algebraically or an equivalent geometrical way. Doing it algebraically takes a wee bit more work. For instance, I know the sine of a and I know that sine squared a plus cos squared a equals 1, one of the basic trig identities. So from that I could find cos of a by doing this. Cos of a would be 1 minus sine squared a and then finally the square root. And of course that square root could be positive or negative. And that's why in the question it said a and b are acute. Because if a is an acute angle I'll be taking the positive root and if A was an obtuse angle, I'd be taking the negative root because the cosine is positive up to 90 and then switches negative as you go beyond 90 to 180. So you could use this, the square root of 1 minus, and that will be 3 fifths squared. So that's the square root of 1 minus 9 20 fifths, making all 20 fifths. That would be 25 take away 9 is 16 20 fifths. And taking the positive root, that would be 4 fifths. That's an awful long way around to do it. It'd be simpler just to do this geometrically. And geometrically means, if the sine of A is 3 fifths, then consider the right angle triangle that could have contained that angle A. If its sine is 3 fifths, that means the side opposite to it would be 3, and its hypotenuse would be 5. And then immediately, the remaining side would have to be 4, either by simple Pythagoras, 5 squared take away 3 squared, 25 take away 9, 16 square root is 4, or just by remembering that particular Pythagorean triple, the 3, 4, 5 triangle. And as soon as that's drawn, immediately you know sine 3 fifths, cosine adjacent, 4 fifths, tangent if you wanted it, 3 quarters. So you could do the same with B. I could draw that triangle at the side. If for the angle B the sine is root 3 upon 4, that means the opposite the side without the angle is root 3, hypotenuse is 4. A bit more Pythagoras to do here. So to find this side, it would have to be that squared take away this one squared. That would be 16 take away 3, which is 13, which makes this root 13. And again, as soon as I've done that in that triangle, I know everything I want. I know the sine, root 3 upon 4. Cosine, root 13 upon 4. Tangent, root 3 upon root 13. So I can go back to this and finish this off then. The sine of A had that anyway, 3 fifths, but I could equally well look at my triangle. The cos of B, root 13 upon 4, plus the cos of A, 4 fifths, cos being the adjacent side, times the sine of B, root 3 upon 4. Now, don't get tempted into cancelling these out, because then you'll have different denominators for the two fractions, so just leave them alone, they're perfect just now, they're both the same. So they're both out of 20, so the single fraction are out of 20. And I've simply got 3 root 13 plus 4 root 3. And there's not a lot I can do about that. And that would just do as the answer to part A. And then for part B, that's just a case of using another one of the addition formulae. This one turns out to be cos A cos B minus sine A sine B. It's just a case of learning them. And then feed those same numbers in. The cosine of A is the adjacent, 4 fifths. The cosine of B is the adjacent, root 13 upon 4. Don't be tempted to cancel that. The sine of A is the opposite, 3 fifths. The sine of B is the opposite, root 3 upon 4. They've both got the same denominator of 20, so the single fraction will be out of 20. And I've got 4 root 13. Take away 3 root 3. And there's not a great deal I can do about that. That would have to do as my exact answer.